Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 2.1b in fifth grade and also topics under the study island lesson entitled fractions and decimals. So when we're going through today's lesson, we're mainly going to be looking at how to convert fractions to decimals. You're going to want to make sure that you are taking notes so that you can have those to refer back to when you're trying these problems on your own. And if I go too fast, just pause and rewind so you can get caught back up. And you can even pause at the beginning of questions, work the problems out yourself, and then watch the video to see, hey, am I getting this problem done correctly or are there still some areas that I need to study and work on? So I'm so glad that you are joining us today, and let's go ahead and take some notes. To convert a fraction to a decimal, you're going to want to get the fraction to have a number that is 1 and a certain amount of zero. So 10, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, but most likely you're only going to have to go up to a thousand. And the reason for that is because once you have 10, hundred, a thousand in the bottom, it's very easy to convert it to a decimal because three tenths as a fraction is the same as three tenths as a decimal. So you just take the numerator and put the last number of the numerator in the place value of what your denominator said. So here is a 10, so the three went in the tenths place value. Here the denominator is a hundred, so the seven is going to go in the hundredths place value and the one follows in the tenths. Here is a 5, and so the 5 is going to go in the hundredth place value. And there's no other number, so you just put a 0 to show the, place, the correct place value. So you have here the last number in the numerator is a 3. It's going to go in the thousandths place value, and the 3 and 2 just follow in. The 7 here at the end is going to go in the thousandths place value. The 4 follows it, and then you have to add a 0 to show the place value correctly. And then the same with the 9. The 9 is going to go in the thousandths place value, but then you have to fill in two zeros to show the place value correctly. And so what do you do if you have fractions that don't automatically have a 10, 100, or 1,000 underneath of it? Well, then you want to think of, okay, 5 times what gets me to 10, or 5 times what gets me to 100 or 1,000? Well, 5 times 2 will get me to 10, so then I just multiply the 2 and the the top and the bottom by 2 and get an equivalent fraction of 4 over 10 and then I can turn that into a decimal. And the same with 50. 50 times 2 gets me to 100 so I just multiply the top by 2 also and convert it to a decimal. And then here 25 times 4 gets me to 100 and then 4 times 25 gets me to 100 here and then 250 times 4 gets me to 1000. So knowing those multiplication facts of what can get you to 10, what can get you to 100, and what can get you to 1,000 will be useful. So this first problem, we are converting the following fraction to a decimal, and they've already made the denominator 100. So that means that I'm going to have a decimal where the last number is in the hundredths place. So it's going to have two decimal place numbers. And so that means I'm just going to fill in the 1 and the 3, and I'm not going to have any extra zeros. And that's just going to make D my answer. So number 2 here, my denominator is not 10, 100, or 1,000. So I'm going to think through what can, how, well, how can I, what can I do with this fraction to get it to 10 or 100. Well, first I look at it and I see, well, there's a 2 and an 8. Those are both even, so I could simplify that to 1 fourth by dividing the top and bottom by 2. And when I do that, I get 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now that I have a 4 on the bottom, I know that 4 times 25 is 100 because it takes 4 quarters to get to a dollar. So if I take that 4 and multiply it by 25 and the 1 and multiply it by 25, that's going to give me a new equivalent fraction. 1 times 25 is 25 on the top and 4 times 25 is 100 on the bottom. So that means my denominator is 100. That means my last number is going to be in the hundredths place value. So I'm going to have to draw a decimal with two decimal places 
And I'm just going to fill in the 25 with no additional zeros. And so my answer here is going to be 0.25. And the answer is going to be D. I can tack as many zeros as I want onto the end of this. They aren't necessary. But here, that if I scratch that zero out on the end, it's not a necessary zero. And that's my answer. They just chose to write it with an extra zero to try to trick you. Now I have a decimal and a fraction and I want to know which one of these is larger. So I can't, can't for sure look at it. I can kind of guess but I'm not too sure. But I'm going to want to go ahead and convert these both to a decimal. So I have the fraction 820 that I need to convert. So I know if I multiply the 20 by 5 that's going to get me to 100. And 100 is one of my magical numbers that I need in the denominator. And then I multiply the top by 5 also, and 8 times 5 is 40. And now I know I'm working with a decimal that goes out to the hundredths place, so it's going to have two decimal numbers. And I just fill in the numerator to get those two decimal numbers, so it's going to be 0.40 or just 0.4, so you can leave it either way. And then I need to look at it, which one of these is bigger? The 0.83 hundredths or the 0.40 hundredths? And so when you compare fractions, you're going to compare them place value to place value. So I'm going to look at the tenth place first, and they're different, and 8 is bigger than 40, so that means 83 hundredths is going to be bigger than 40 hundredths, and that's going to make my final answer C. This time they're asking which is smaller. So I'm going to do what I did before and make this fraction into a decimal. I know that there's four quarters in a dollar, so that means 25 times 4 is going to equal 100. So that's going to get me to that magical 100 or 10 or 1,000, but this time 100 in the denominator. And so whatever I multiply the bottom by, I also have to multiply the top by. And 4 times 17 is going to be 68. And now that I have that 100 in the bottom, I know that my decimal equivalent is going to have two decimal places to get to the hundredth place value. And I'm just going to fill in my 68. So now I'm comparing that to the 4.48 and I'm trying to decide which one of those is smaller. I compare place value with place value, starting with the one the furthest on the left and 6 is bigger than 4, so that means 0.68 is going to be bigger, and the 0.48 hundredths is going to be the smaller one, and that's going to make B my final answer. So here they give me four different numbers, and they want us to rank them from the greatest to least. So you always want to pay attention to see if it's biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest, so you don't get pick the wrong one just because you didn't closely read the directions. So I'm going to pull out my two fractions and convert both of those to a decimal. They both have a denominator of 25. And like I said, we know that 25 times 4 is going to get me that magical denominator of 100 that makes writing this as a decimal much easier. So I'm going to have to multiply both of the numerators by 4 also. And 7 times 4 is 28, and then 17 times 4 is 68. And then both of these have 100 in the denominator, so that means I'm going to have a decimal that goes out to the hundredths place. And I'm going to fill the numerator of both of those in. So now I'm looking at four decimal numbers. I'm looking at 0.28. 0.68, and then the other two that were in the problem are 0.37 and 0.77. And so I just need to pick the biggest one and list them down to the smallest one. So my biggest one here is 0.77, and then it's 0.68 hundredths, and then it's 37 hundredths, and then it's 28 hundredths. And you're not going to see that answer up here, though, because remember, 
the point twenty eight hundredths and the sixty eight hundredths came from fractions, so I'm just gonna have to look for their fraction equivalents. So instead of the point sixty eight hundredths, I'm gonna be looking for seventeen twenty fifths. And instead of the twenty eight hundredths, I'm gonna be looking for seven twenty fifths. So the where the answer where I see seventy seven hundred, then seventeen over twenty five, then thirty seven hundred, then seven over twenty five is choice D, which is going to be my final answer. The following question says June is baking a cake for her sister's birthday party. The recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of butter. If she adds seventy seven hundred cup of butter, what is it the correct amount of butter? So that means we're going to have to convert three quarters to a decimal so that we can compare these two numbers to see if it was the correct amount or not. So I have three fourths, and I know if I multiply four times 25, that will get me to 100, which is one of the magical denominators. So I also have to multiply the top by 25. 3 times 25 is 75. Remember, if you have 3 quarters, that's 75 cents. And then that means to convert that to a decimal, I'm going to have a decimal that goes out to the hundredths place because the denominator is 100. And the numerator, I'm just able to fill in. And so a recipe actually calls for 0 0.75 hundredths of a cup, and she put in 0 0.77 hundredths. Those are not the same numbers. The, her number was 0.2 hundredths over. It was too much. It was bigger than what you, she was supposed to put in. So that means that B is going to be my final answer. And this next question says that Josiah is weighing 5 and 75 hundredths pound rock in a double scale to verify the weight of his, to his friends. He already added 5 and 37 hundredths pounds to the scale. If he adds 11 over 20 more pounds to the scale, will it be add up to the correct amount of weight? So to be able to add these two numbers to see if it's correct, I'm going to have to convert this number to a decimal first. So I'm going to take that fraction, 11 over 20, and think about what number can I multiply the bottom by to get to 10, 100, or 1,000. Well, I know there's 20 nickels in a dollar, so if I take 20 times 5, that's going to get me to 100. So that means I have to take the top times 5 also. 11 times 5 is 55. And so that means since my denominator is 100, I'm going to have a decimal with the, to the hundredths place value. So that's going to be 55 hundredths as a decimal. So now I can take the amount he had, 5 and 37 hundredths, and add it to that 11 over 20, which we found that is the same as 55 hundredths. I line up the decimals when I'm adding. And when I add that, I get 5 and 92 hundredths. He only needs 5 and... 75 hundredths, so it's too much. And so, and if you subtract those two numbers, once again, lining up your decimals, you're going to end up with that it was 17 hundredths too much. So that's going to make choice B my final answer. You're also going to see questions that involve using the thousandths cube as a model. So the thousandths cube is shown above with seven thousandths missing. What part of the cube is showing? So you could count it up. Remember, each 10 by 10 chunk is 100. And then when you get to the front chunk that has stuff missing, you can count each row or column by 10. And then you have to count out your ones. But because I know that a whole thousandth cube is a thousand out of a thousand cubes are present, and here I know that seven out of those thousand are missing, I can do subtraction. So 
1,000 minus 7 is 993 out of the 1,000 are actually present. And then to write that as a decimal, I know that I'm going to have a decimal that goes out to the thousandth place value, so three decimal places. And I can just fill those three numbers from the numerator in. So that's going to make letter A 993 thousandths my final answer. Here's another type of model. This first chunk here has a thousand different squares drawn on it. And there are 200 of them filled in. So that's why here we have 200 thousandths written down here at the bottom. And it wants to know if, if I draw a model with just 100 blocks, but it's the same size and the same amount shaded in, how could I write a fraction or that is the same as that 200 thousandths. Well, this is out of 100. And then I count and there is 10, 20 blocks filled in. So that means 20 out of the 100 are filled in. So that B is going to be the equivalent fraction to 200 thousandths. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.